Hello again, everyone. My name is Jordan. I am the product manager for a number of our city initiatives here at Uber, including Uber Movement, and excited to just kick this off. A uh, very exciting program ahead of us here. Uh, if you haven't already seen it, uh, feel free to take a moment to download the workshop data. Uh, but as we're getting started, so tonight we're going to be talking about urban planning, specifically looking at Kepler and Uber Movement and starting to work with some of the data with these products. Uh, and very excited to be meeting with all of you. <clears throat> so uh, we'll be kicking off just with a quick overview, talking through Kepler, um, some amazing work that Shared Streets has been doing uh, that we're really excited to be partnering with them on, uh, working through Uber Movement and specifically the speeds data that we've released free freely and publicly there. Uh, uh, spending some time with uh, David from the uh, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, I'm not even gonna try with the rest of it, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, to talk through how they're starting to use some of this data and then going into the workshop itself. So a little bit about everyone that's not me up on this. So uh, uh, Ben over somewhere over there, there he is. Uh, uh, we'll be leading through all the movement programs. Uh, Shan will be talking about Kepler. Uh, Dave walking through everything with OKI. Uh, Utsav talking through the data and how we're starting to work with it. And finally, Morgan from Shared Streets talking through all the awesome stuff that they're doing. So really excited to be talking through all of this with all of you today and talking to all of you after the fact and hopefully getting the chance to eat some pizza with all of you. <clears throat> so what is all of this about? So basically all of these programs at Move, uh, Uber were born out of this recognition that we as a company need to be better partners to the cities in which we operate. And one of the ways that we can do that is by helping cities with some of the problems that they face day to day from mobility and safety and all these other critical issues. And how can we provide the data and tools and open source mechanisms to be able to work with this information in a useful and scalable way and really think about interoperability with existing systems and with industry standards that are already in use thinking about how this data can be something that is used in a broader context that isn't just about Uber. And as a result of that, be part of realizing how it is that cities can make more effective data-driven decisions um, and really be able to leverage the data and tools that not just Uber, but really this wider industry has available as effectively as possible. So before we actually dig into this though, a quick show of hands, who in here would label themselves a transportation planner? Two, two, all right, all right. Developer, San Francisco, all right, no surprises. Uh, student, awesome, awesome. How about anyone uh, who is a data scientist or analyst? All right, awesome spread of people, fantastic. So I think we have a little bit of something for all of you um, and excited to be kicking this off. And so we'll go ahead and be getting started by again, talking through Kepler. So I'd like to welcome Shan forward to talk about what exactly that is and what it's all about and go through each one of these products and initiatives in turn. Um, hello, my name is Shan. Uh, I'm a tech lead on Kepler GL. Um, have you guys heard of Kepler before? Yes, I, I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of noddings, but no, Kepler.gl. <laughs> not the um, telescope. Um, so Kepler GL is our, used to be our internal geospatial visualization tool. Um, we built Kepler because we realized there's a need for folks to uh, quickly visualize a large scale of geospatial data set, uh, exploring it, uh, apply different color scales, uh, apply different visual channel uh, modifications, using filter, all of stuff in one tool in the UI and, and extremely fast. And right now, at least before I built it, I uh, feel like there's not such tool on the market. So um, at Uber, geospatial data is one of our biggest assets. Uh, we use it to better understanding our business. This is a map I made about four or five years ago when I first joined Uber. Um, beyond that, because Uber is a transportation business, we, uh, we constantly wanted to understand relationship between start and end of trips. So uh, we make this kind of origin destination maps with uh, each arcs linking a start of a trip and an end of a trip, just to understand, you know, in the different, in the specific city, 
how different part of the city are linked to, it, to each other when people travel. So this is a map of London and uh, using one day of Uber trip. And going below even each individual trip, what we got the most on our platform are GPS pings. Um, whenever you're on a trip, your driver's phone will send signals to our, uh, well collected by, by our platform, and we use it to you know, create awesome data sets such like movement, movement speed. Um, this is map was created using just every single driver, uh, driver GPS pings, and then um, pinned it by about 100 meter radius just to see the density of pings. And this is a map of Jakarta. Very interesting enough because this map has no knowledge of where the road network is, but just by looking at the density of GPS pings, we can see the city network very clearly. Um, another map, uh, Another visual we are interested in looking at, see, this is why I need, I need uh, the lights to be off, but okay. Try to imagine this uh, uh, a very dark background map was uh, moving trips where a uh, color is based on uh, 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 traffic, right? So we're try when we're looking at whether Uber pool, the use of Uber pool might <laughs> improve traffic or not, we, we made this kind of map just as a teaser. We're using one day of Uber pool trip, and then on the other side, we simulated separate trips to see if people didn't take, take Uber pool to begin with, uh, what, they take separate trip, what would be the traffic look like? So this is done with a lot of finicky. We project each individual GPS points onto the road segments, and, and then we map it, match it to each individual OSRM road segments, and then we calculate the traffic based on that. Thank you. <laughs> Um, going forward, uh, as you can see, I told, I told all the interesting data stories with all the visuals. I've been Uber at five years now. I made millions, oh, not millions, maybe hundreds of this kind of maps <laughs> using millions of data points. I made uh, hundreds of this kind of map, right? There's only one Shan, but you know, everyone wants map every day. So to make my life easier and also everybody else's life easier, uh, we decided to create two out of it. So, you know, every common process of geospatial visualization has to go through all of these. You have collect different data sets, you know, movement speed, for example. You do some processing with your tool and you're visualizing with whatever kind of uh, tool you have, either ArcGIS, QGIS, Mapbox, any kind of tool on the market. And then you create visualization that best convenient your insights. So all those steps, usually uh, have to involve many different kind of tool sets. You might have to write JavaScript sometimes, Python to clean up data, know how to use uh, Jupyter Notebook or write R. You have to have all this kind of toolings to help you do it. But uh, what if we make it less easier, uh, sorry, less harder? Uh, you know, not every visualization was created with just click one click of a button, everything fell at the first try. And then you have to do this like, many, many time of trial, uh, trial and error and then create something useful. So that's why we built Kepler GL. Have everyone here know what ArcGIS is? Yes, think of Kepler as uh, ArcGIS, but much faster and work on the work in browser and most importantly free and work on Mac. So Kep <laughs> why Kepler? Because uh, for a long time, we uh, were data visualization engineers. So we imagine uh, our job is as important as astronauts. So we try to find names of all the NASA spatial exploratory missions, and Kepler is one of them. So, you know, we want to eventually go out of the Earth and try to visualize something in space. So, Kepler is data agnostic, WebGL based um, web application for geospatial analysis. It is accelerated by GPU. A lot of renders are actually done on GPU, so you know you don't have the, the lack of running JavaScript on CPU all the time. It create uh, you provide a lot of uh, presets, mapping layers, and we we'll keep adding more as we learn. And it has it offers client side data filtering and other fly, on the fly aggregation. All the data stay in the browser. We have no backend for this, and, and you can upload us up to like couple hundred megabyte, or if you request it, uh, like uh, hun, hun, one or two million data points in the browser. 
all in Kepler without have to connect to any backend service. So a quick snippet of what it can do. Um, it allow you to do this uh, interaction in the browser where you mouse over area to highlight uh, trips by origin destinations, it allow you to do uh, 3D aggregate, uh, uh, hexagon aggregations with a 3D dimension, it allow you to draw shapes like polygons, but also add the third dimension to it, and it creates awesome, um, you know, origin destination map with a couple of million arcs. It allow you on the fly client side filtering based on whatever metadata you have. So um, a, a common data flow is you upload a CSD or GeoJSON or uh, run your own Kepler app to connect with your backend. You load your data into browser. You can filter however you want by clicking through the UI. And then you choose different data layers and interact with it. So this is how you, know, uh, you can just drag and drop a GeoJSON into it. This is um, the San Francisco Contour GeoJSON, and you can apply a color based on elevation, change the width of the stroke, and change you know, how you want the color class to work. Uh, you can turn the, uh, the base map layer off and then uh, looking at the map in 3D. All of them in browser very smoothly. Um, because Coupler is built with a geotemporal visualization in mind, uh, we uh, support animation, time-based animation out of the box. So if your data actually contain timestamp, uh, you can just drag and drop into Kepler, apply a time filtering, and, and then do this kind of playback. So because we have this feature, in fact, the most requested feature from Kepler is to export videos. And it also does uh, aggregation on the fly. So if you're just looking at random trips, a million trip doesn't tell you many, anything. But we allow you to do like uh, aggregation based on grid or hexagon. You can aggregate based on, you know, up down to 10 meter, um, 10 meter radius, uh, having the color of the hexagon based on density or a third metric. And then add a third dimension to hexagon where you can have the height of the hexagon also based on density and other metrics. And you can apply filters, so filter out all layers to have the lower uh, kind of band more visible. And in the end, we offer this interaction called brushing. Brushing is essential to understand uh, watching destinations. So um, we allow you to just mouse over map any part of the map and then highlight arcs uh, start or end around a certain area where your mouse is uh, currently looking at. And uh, all of to said, we actually offer more than 10 type of layers. We're going to offer also a traffic layer where you just drag and drop each trips in, all, all the trips into Kepler, and we can immediately help you animating it. So as I said, it's open sourced. Uh, our demo app you will later use is hosting on Kepler slash demo, and our GitHub is uh, uh, GitHub. Yeah, so uh, besides that, since we know data science or analysts like you, not just using web tools, uh, you, many of you use Tableau, many of you use Jupyter, we actually build a couple of plugins for both, um, for both tools, just so that uh, data science doesn't have to go out of their most common or familiar tool set to use Kepler. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.